the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I like it because we was Caleb and Joshua. They're like praying to us. Let's go up at once. Let's let's go up at once. They, in other words, one reason, the, the the ten, they reason. Hey, we can't go in there. <laughs> it's Jesus in there. But but Joshua and Caleb, they're praying to us. Huh? That's scary. It is interesting. Yeah. Everything that they experienced was God wrong. The sin of Moses, the confrontation of Pharaoh, yeah, yeah, the miraculous miracle, the final one that broke Pharaoh and caused him to grant deliverance. Right, right, right. The was God wrong, but none of it changed them inwardly. And you see. See, I think a lot of people in the church, you see, is dangerous because we just think that if we embrace Christ, that somehow uh -huh, it's uh -huh. good. Right. Because but if you embrace Christ and you still think like a brute, Woo. like a bitch, you know, if you embrace Christ and fail to be brought to the place where you become fruitful, Yes, sir. Yeah. See, we, we just somehow think that that somehow God just going to be kind and merciful to us anyhow. That the longer we believe in Christ, we're good. And I'm, I'm like, that. listen, this doesn't mean that everybody can talk to their own people. But I like this scripture. If you don't fulfill the purpose for which God brought you out, mm -hmm. if he didn't let those people get into the promised land because they didn't fulfill his purpose, Right. We, we we might be we might be fooling ourselves on a large scale if we think that somehow it's about I put my faith in Christ, but yet I don't go on to be transformed, to be conformed, to become right. a creature, to put all things away, and all of a sudden embrace the ways and, and God and God thinking on that level. If we think that somehow we can get away with that, mm. yeah, I, I'm pretty so sure that we ain't in the same category with them people. And he, he told you, I can't what to do. You turn around, go back out to the wilderness, and for 40 years you go walking. Right. Because in other words, we 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 see the giants, our intellect, what I call them, because they are giants, right? Our life, we, there's giants in the land. <laughs> because, let me tell you what he said. Let me tell you what, what Jew said about these men. Jew said in verse number four, he said, for there are certain men crept in unaware who were before ordained of old, of this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying. Denying. The only Lord. Look here. It said denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Now he, look, he said turning the grace of God. Yeah. They 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 took the grace of God into the sinners and, and began to make it be something that God never intended. Hmm. They, they they take right they because the grace does not in other words, I guess a lot of cases sometimes we want the grace of God, but we don't want if you to me it's like this, if you, you receive grace, you give grace. But if you don't give grace, then I mean there's something, there's something missing in the understanding God, right? You know, that God gives you grace to come in. Well, but, but the point he's making here is that the grace of God is not for the continuance of sin. Agree, right, right. So, 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 so Paul, that's, that's in Romans chapter six. He says, uh, in Romans six, I think the first verse he says, <laughs> let's have you say then. Let's see. In Romans six. Shall we continue in sin? Woo! 
That grace may abound. Come on, that woo, woo, turning grace into life. Grace is not for the continuance of sin. Right. Grace is to get. It's God to bring it in to sin. <laughs> grace is to get you out. Grace, grace is to get you out of Egypt. Yeah. Grace, grace is to get you into the promised land. But grace ain't intended for you to continue it in Egypt in your heart, in your heart and in your mind. Come on, don't take Egypt. Don't take Egypt with you into the promised land. Don't don't turn God's grace into an opportunity to continue to be Egyptian thinking, Egyptian reasoning, fleshly thinking. No, no. Don't turn grace into that. Grace is not extended to you. Grace really is now for God to do in you what you will otherwise never be able to do yourself. Do yourself, right. Right. You know, because it's funny, it's when when they when they complained that night, they, you know, they they wanted to go all the way back. Remember, we just talked earlier. They wanted to go all the way back to Egypt, didn't they? They they they, they even wanted to put a captain in there, but they was they were crying all that night. All the congregation lifted their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel, murmuring against Moses, against Aaron, and the whole congregation, said unto them. I got this over a little bit. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in this wilderness? Wherefore the Lord has brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be prey, were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. And I'm just saying, like you said, is that the, the, the deliverance of God, if we don't watch out, unbelief, I think that's really what happened, causes us to go back toward the carnality, back toward bondage. And, and all the people, look, the whole bunch of people, listen, here's the scary thing, is that the whole congregation agree. And I'm saying is that if we are saved by grace, is it so easy to be convinced to default back to what this, 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 this flashy way of thinking? Well, here's, here's the same thing I found about this whole thing is that Jews interpret certain conduct and behavior in speaking uh, as unbelief. Unbelief. And they couldn't get in because of unbelief. Wow. Let me see. Go back to it. Because so if you deny him, That's basically what unbelief does. Uh-huh. See, unbelief denies God the right and the privilege to do what he purposes to do. To, to his will for all mankind, right? So he's, he's, the, he's trying to take them into the promised land. Yeah, yeah. But through their unbelief, they denied him the right to do that. And you see, you see, without faith, See, God has hidden this whole thing around on faith. Right. And then to just to live by faith. So Abraham believed God. Right. It was counted kind of for righteousness. Yeah. But he, he, but you know, he acted out on what he believed too. Well, what? Well, well, faith without any action. Look, look, listen. Any faith that does not cause God to do something is not faith. Mm. 